You want to talk plants? Early May, here together with black locust, Robinia sudacacea, plant family Fabaceae or Fabace, also known as Leguminose. Plant genus Robinia honors royal French gardeners Jean Robin and his son Vespasien Robin, credited to have been the first to introduce this species in Europe as early as 1601. The specific epithet Sudacacia would translate into fake or false acacia. Even though in the same family of Fabaceae, the plant genus of acacia has a total different floral structure when compared to black locus, and it is in a different subfamily of Fabaceae plant family. Acacia plant genus also prefers tropical and subtropical climates, and it would not thrive in the colder temperate climate as this particular species, black locus. Even though named in honor of French gardeners, black locust is an Eastern North American species, and its native range is rather hard to pinpoint at this point, as it was cultivated for a very long time for its multiple uses, and it is now present in all lower 48 United States, as well as Eastern Canada and British Columbia. It is widely cultivated throughout temperate areas, and now it is considered an invasive species in many parts of Europe, Asia, Southern Africa, and even Western North America. Its original native range might have two populations, one in the Appalachian Mountains from Pennsylvania to Northern Georgia, and another population farther west, centered around the Ozark Plateau and the Wachita Mountains, in Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. A medium-sized deciduous tree, black locust reaches 12 to 30 meters tall. With a very straight trunk and slow to rot wood, it was a preferred tree for fence posts. It has alternate leaves, pinnately compound, with 9 to 19 leaflets. Leaves are usually subtended by two stipular spines. Stipules are usually leaf-like appendages at the base of the petiole. In this case, they are transformed in stipular spines. Even though slightly similar to its cousin, honey locust, also native to Eastern North America, Gleditia tricanthus, Black locust lacks the very intricate thorns straight on the trunk present on honey locust, instead having only stipular spines. The leaflets of black locust are also larger than the leaflets of honey locust. Late spring to early summer, black locust trees produce abundant clusters of beautifully fragrant flowers. Flowers are complete perfect and zygomorphic with bilateral symmetry, having five fused sepals, five petals, ten stamens, nine fused together, and a tenth that is not fused to the rest. In the center of the flower, there is one pistil with one carpel, a monocarpus gynoecium, that will eventually ripen in a legume-type fruit. Black locust is an important honey-producing plant in eastern North America and numerous European countries, and it is the source of the renowned acacia honey. Unfortunately, its blooms last only about 10 days, and often even less than that, as they are incredibly fragile and very weather-dependent. Too much sun, too much rain, wind and storms will ruin the nectar production for that year. Black locust flowers are pollinated by bees and wasps. The leaves are food for numerous species of butterflies and moths, and the seeds are a food source for birds and squirrels. 
Black locust trees are a shade intolerant species, inhabiting young woodland, a pioneer species, thriving on poor dry soils. Their roots have nodules that will house nitrogen fixing bacteria, a legume plant family characteristic, giving them an edge on conquering new soils. Nitrogen is a very important element in the production of proteins and nucleic acids. Metabolism, growth, and cellular reproduction are dependent on nitrogen availability. Black locusts are considered an excellent choice for poor soils and for soil erosion control. In Europe, they're also planted along city streets as they tolerate pollution rather well. Unfortunately, it's a very aggressive invasive species, replacing native species. Besides abundant seed production for sexual reproduction, they also reproduce vegetatively through root suckers, adding to their invasive abilities. In France, Italy, and Romania, the flowers are eaten in crepes or dipped in butter and deep fried. They're also enjoyed in Japan in tempura butter. The leaves, bark, and wood are toxic to both humans and livestock, and horses in particular will present symptoms about an hour after ingestion, and veterinary intervention is required. The wood is very hard, maybe one of the hardest woods in North America. It is very resistant to rot, durable, making it prized for furniture, flooring, paneling, fence, posts, canoes. It is a highly durable wood that does not require chemical treatment to preserve its beauty for decades or longer. Beautiful tree, beautiful blooms, desirable wood, nitrogen-fixing plant. Unfortunately, an aggressive invasive that should not be planted outside of its native range. And now, with hundreds of years of data attesting for its invasiveness, I strongly recommend that you don't plant this particular species outside of its native range in eastern North America. And even that, 